These boys enjoying a game of football look like any other kids. But there's something that sets them apart from their friends. When the sun goes down, the others will go home to their families. But the three brothers will be left alone in their shack. No parents to feed them or put them to bed. They will have to fend for themselves until morning. I'm standing on a bridge overlooking Artebiaspur Dam and some of the most prime real estate in South Africa. In fact, many of the mansions behind me are used as second homes or weekend getaways. But just up the hill are families living in grinding poverty and many of them headed by children. Schaumburg is a squatter camp that has sprung up next to an old Lutheran mission school. With no electricity and only one tap for the entire settlement, every day is a struggle for survival. It's as if they've been forgotten. The people of this community are at the very bottom of the social ladder, but through some sense of Ubuntu, they try to share. But how do you begin to provide for somebody else's kids when you yourself have absolutely nothing? Dita Bojo and Lebohang are 10-year-old twins. Their little brother, Moaketsi, is eight. None of them know when their birthdays are, and their mother rented this room before she abandoned them. They are visibly dirty and neglected, with their scalps covered in a fungal infection. Why were you pause? Dita Bojo is epileptic, so the role of the parent has been taken on by Lebo Khang. He is clearly in charge, making sure his brothers make the bed, tidy the room, and have something to eat. Today is Sunday, and he's preparing to cook a packet of chicken necks. This is one of the worst scenarios that we have, that these are little boys that need to be looked after, and they have to look after themselves. Bernice Maponyane is a manager of the Parents and Child Counseling Center. If it wasn't for this organization, the plight of these boys would have gone completely unnoticed. How long have these kids been on their own? Since the beginning of this year. And their mother never made any plans to? Not at all. No contact, nothing. And their father? Father's whereabouts is unknown. It's unknown to us. It's unknown to the children. The Heart of Beersport branch is run by the Johannesburg Parent and Child Counseling Center. Since 1944, they have provided therapy and support to children and their families. The director is Jackie Michael. For many years, I think people thought that if families weren't working, they should remove the children. And our services have always been on keeping the families together. Because removing children and putting them into institutions is really not an answer. But with over two million AIDS orphans in South Africa, they have had to come up with other solutions. We help them to deal with the grieving because, of course, that is a huge problem. Many of them have nursed their dying parents. Many of them have not dealt at all with the emotional effect of losing their parents and then having to bring up their younger siblings. So our aim is to connect them with other adults in the community or to try to support them in living on their own. This container houses the offices of the Parent and Child Counselling Centre. There's one social worker here who services the needs of hundreds of people in this community. The dream is to establish a creche using containers just like this. The resident social worker at Hartebeersburt is Helen Matlase. She counsels children at six schools in the area and often visits them at home to assess their situation. Six-year-old Sina lost both parents to AIDS this year, and she now lives with her aunt and cousins. So, Sina, come on. Come on, Mama. Okay, then that one. Then come on, okay, Give Sina. 
Although she has been kept within the family, Sina isn't receiving the best care. Her aunt is mentally handicapped and all seven of them survive on her disability grant. From what we can see, most of it is spent on alcohol. They live on a farm 17 kilometers away from Schaumburg School. And when there's no money for transport, Sina has to walk. Edith Nkabinde is her grade one teacher. How has she been coping with the situation? Ah, it's a mess in the classroom. It's a mess she cannot cope in the classroom. We are still struggling with the letter S, Sina, when writing her name. This is August. Still struggling with the name, let alone the rest. Helen does play therapy with Sina twice a week to help her come to terms with her loss. I remember when the first time I saw Sina, she was like, couldn't see smile or anything. She would talk with the dolls and with the toys and you can't see smile. But after some few sessions, I, see, I saw a smile on her face and usually come here during break and talk to me. Most of the children attending Fricky Smith Primary School are orphans. In many cases, the cup of soup and slice of bread they get at break time is the only meal they get the whole day. Some of the children, like Moeketsi and his brothers, live at Schaumburg camp, while others, like 13-year-old Ntabeseng and her 10-year-old sister, Laratu, live on the surrounding farms. Orphans living in farming communities have an added stress. For many of these children, the cottages they live in are the only homes they've ever known. And when their parents, who are the farm workers, die, they're left in a state of limbo with no guarantee they'll be allowed to stay there. After school, the sisters go home to nothing and no one. Since their parents died earlier this year, it's just the two of them living here. And at night, they get nervous because the back window is broken. What is the most difficult part of living here alone? Sometimes we don't have food, so we just live without eating. How do you cope when those situations happen? We, we just cope. According to the principal, Ntabi Seng is the brightest kid in the school, but with all the responsibility she now has to shoulder, chances are she will never reach her full potential. What's the hardest part of having to look after your sister? When, when I see her sad and maybe hurt, yeah, I can't comfort her the way my mother or my father did. What's the worst situation you've seen here? Most of the people in this community works in the farms. And I've seen mothers locking the children inside the sheikhs, leaving to go and work in the farms. And that's, of course, because there's no creche to take the kids to. There are just no resources, absolutely no resources. So we are wanting to set up a preschool for at least 40 little ones in that area. And we do not have the containers, the equipment, whatever. We do have community interest. We need to train people, we need to be able to pay them for one year because once we get it registered with the Department of Social Development, they will fund it. The Parents and Child Counselling Centre is making a difference to hundreds of vulnerable children. But with limited state funding and no lotto donation since 2006, they are struggling to continue their work. Northwest Department of Social Services didn't pay Helen's salary for a whole year. And many funders do not want to fund salaries and our work is done through people. We have excellent staff, well-trained staff, we do good supervision, but we have to be able to sustain it. Their running costs are three million rand a year, and over half of that depends on donations. Their Johannesburg headquarters are run down and need renovating, while the Heart of Beer Spirit office desperately needs an air conditioner, amongst other things. And you know, the roads here, I, I think we need a buggy. And as for the orphans, their needs are both physical and emotional. They need clothes, they need school shoes, they need school uniform. They need to have breakfast in the morning when they wake up. They need to have lunch, supper when they come back home, and all of that they can't get. If someone wanted to help you, how would you like them to help you? Take care of us and love us as their own children.
if we stop doing this, then who's going to do it? And there are hundreds of thousands of children in this country that need support. We cannot save all of them, but we can make a difference. And I think that's what keeps you going. Thank you.